welcome. I'm Brian Westbrook with GateWire Studios. We are going to have an exciting conversation about Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. And I'm joined by Karan Bata, the Senior Vice President of OCI, and Jeff Carter, Vice President of Databases. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start with Karan. Why provide Oracle Database Services in competitors' clouds? Now, we're talking about having OCI available on AWS. That feels wrong. Why would, why would we do that? Yeah, thanks. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, super excited to talk about this offering. Um, you know, customers, the, the world, world's data runs on Oracle databases, right? Every customer that has got a productivity suite also has an Oracle database. They they run their most mission critical applications on Oracle database. And, you know, we've been in business for a very, very long time and customers depend on Oracle technology. Um, you know, we want to provide customers Right. So if they've already picked, as an example, AWS as their primary cloud, we don't want to prevent them from not being able to deploy Oracle databases on AWS. However, we do want to provide the right level of controls. We want to provide the light, right level of feature sets. We want to provide everything that a customer would get on Oracle Cloud, but also through AWS and other providers potentially. So we want to provide the same level of guarantees, flexibility, feature sets, et cetera, that customers would expect out of an Oracle database uh, technology, whether it's deployed on-prem or in the cloud. And that's, you know, that's why really we, we've been working with all of the cloud providers to make sure that you know, Oracle database is available as a first-class citizen in every single cloud, whether, whether you choose to deploy it on our cloud or somebody else's cloud or whatever, it, that should not actually be a decision point. It should actually be about your application about your data needs, about what other things that you want to do. And we should be able to provide that uh, ubiquity across any cloud. And Jeff, a uh, follow-up to you. Is this a matter of if you can't beat them, join them? Why would AWS want a once fierce competitor in this space to provide their services on AWS? Yeah, and actually we've been great partners over the last decade. Um, we've been serving uh, with RDS Oracle. We've been serving Oracle customers for uh, over a decade. And um, I'm really happy with this announcement, and I appreciate uh, Karan's uh, work and his team's efforts. We're excited to have them at reInvent this year, and we're really excited about this announcement. You know, I've been talking to a lot of different customers, and they're all excited about the ability to bring their exadata workloads into the cloud and into AWS's cloud. And this is a, not just a matter of making another product offering available, but this is pretty serious stuff. These are databases that are entrenched and ingrained in the organizations, and you've made it easy to ETL over to them, right? There, there's really zero ETL. It's not a matter of, of extracting, transforming, and loading the data, but it, it seamlessly transforms. Tell us a little bit about that, Jeff. Yeah, um, in, in calling out to Oracle, the Exadata workloads are typically the biggest, hardest workloads in any enterprise. And so we're excited to be able to have that offering within AWS, but then we'll be able to combine it with all of the goodness that AWS brings. You know, for example, uh, if you want to run your applications, you'll be able to do that on EC2 and be able to connect that into the Exadata system. Um, by GA, we'll be able to have the ability to do backup to S3. We'll have our zero ETL infrastructure. And in addition to running analytics on Oracle, this will open up the door to a large number of analytic services, both from AWS and the AWS marketplace. It also sets up people who want to do machine learning and AI to be able to use tools like AWS SageMaker and Bedrock. Now, Jeff, um, help me out a little bit here. What's the difference between Oracle Database on-prem and OCI on AWS? Yeah, so the on-prem version, companies for decades have had physical hardware sitting in their data centers. And many customers want to continue to do that, but some customers want to have a second data center inside the cloud or move completely into the cloud. And so while uh, they've been very happy with the Oracle solution on-prem, this gives them the ability to, um, you know, a lot of companies are not in the data center business and they don't want to be in the data center business. So they're looking for companies like uh, Amazon and AWS to be able to serve the infrastructure that they're looking for. And Exadata is a great solution. Karan, you have something to add there. Yeah, definitely. I think I think you know to piggyback off what Jeff said. I think you know customers are going through this massive transformation, uh, you know, into the cloud. Right. Um, of course, there's a lot of uh, adoption of the cloud, but really, true mission critical databases are still sitting on prem. Mm -hmm. Right. And the reason for that is again, like you know, they're 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 super critical. Availability is really important. 
uh, you know, customers want to be able to have the right dials and, and, and knobs to be able to manage their databases and their workloads. And they want to have zero downtime, right? They want to control all these things. And so, but they may want, they may not want to use OCI, right? They may want to use another cloud provider like AWS. And so up until now, what we weren't able to do was give them that option. But now we're super excited and happy where we can actually embed OCI technology within an AWS data center. Right. That's the great part about this is it's still a managed offering by Oracle where we manage it and we operate it. We land our hardware within the confines of an AWS data center. And then there's integration between AWS stack and Oracle cloud to such a point where the customers get the benefits that we provide our customers on OCI. But they actually get that directly from AWS and they're able to do that using their own AWS uh, dollars that they spend and commit on AWS. They're able to get an integrated support mechanism. They're able to get all these things that you would expect out of a cloud, except they're getting all of the benefits of on-prem and the Oracle goodness combined with AWS benefits. What do you say to the customers, Karan, that just can't go into a public cloud? What are the offerings there? Well, you know, we we obviously have, uh, uh, it, so does uh, AWS. We obviously have offerings such as dedicated region which is if a customer uh, does not want to go into the cloud, we have the ability to actually essentially take our public cloud and deploy it whole set directly into their, uh, into their region. So think of it as like a public commercial region, but for one customer, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we're able to essentially take all of our services and all of our hardware and deploy it into a customer's facility, still operated, managed by Oracle. And again, there's there's no saying that that's you know not a, not being able to be interconnected with other clouds. You could still have a network pipe between other clouds. You can still burst out to other public regions. So there's a lot of flexibility now in the kinds of choices that customers have to deploy their Oracle workloads. Now, speaking of choice, Karan, help me. Where does one decide where? Uh, how does one decide where to pick where to run their Oracle databases? It sounds like you've outlined a lot of options. How do you choose? The good news is that the baseline is the same, right? The Oracle database that you get in OCI is identical to the database offering that you would get through AWS, as an example, or other clouds for that matter. Of course, it's the integrations with the cloud providers that make them slightly different, right? Um, and so from that perspective, the database really doesn't become a conversation point when they're moving to the cloud. It really comes down to, okay, where's your actual core data set? You know, maybe maybe you're you're headed into the AI sort of revolution. What models are you using? Maybe perhaps maybe you're using models that are that are served by AWS, and that's where you want to build your applications. And so it's very very simple and easy for you to actually bring your Oracle database along with you to whatever cloud you pick, right? Or even if you're going to be on prem. So I think it really just comes down to what are the choices that you have made. Um, what are you already entrenched in, right? Customers that have already been using AWS for a decade at this point are likely to use AWS. Customers that are trying to have a multi-cloud strategy where they maybe want to use several different cloud providers together may have built a platform on top to manage all those things. And from that perspective, you can deploy Oracle Database anywhere. So I think actually in this case, choice is actually really, really good. I mean, if you go back a little bit you know, in time, Customers used to be able to build a private cloud on-prem by picking different vendors all the time, right? In the recent history, that hasn't really been the, been the case with, with cloud. It's sort of like you, you pick a cloud and you're sort of, you're stuck there, right? I think with this partnership, what we've shown between AWS and Oracle is partners can work together, technology providers can work together, and customers will just benefit from the choice. And it just really comes down to what is it that they need? And they can pick the different options as they, as they see fit. Very well said. I love that. Jeff, what are you excited about to see as this partnership between AWS and Oracle grows into the future? What's next? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think some key things are one, we're going to have super low latency between the EC2 tier and the Exadata tier. And that's really important for the customer applications. Um, they're really looking for that level of performance. And I think we've got some extra stuff up our sleeves that will be coming in the future. Um, I'm also very excited about the simplified management and operations. We're really going to give a unified experience with support, purchasing, management, and operations of these systems. So I think customers are going to be able to get the goodness from both the OCI environment and from the AWS environment. 
it sounds exciting. This is certainly something that has been uh, many, many years in the work, in the works, in the making. Congratulations to both of your teams for bringing this together, for announcing this exciting partnership. We look forward to seeing more between Oracle and AWS as those customers bring their databases to the AWS cloud platform. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. Take care.